evolution of a warrior, you know. The warrior to the white man. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Yeah, 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 man. Healthy family's good, you know. Being a dad, you know, as, as another part of the life, you know. But, you know, just still fighting, bro. Fighting for life, you know. That's what it is. Stay invisible. Stay natural. Yep. Thank you, brother. You too, brother. I appreciate it, man. We're in central London, we're at uh, 30 uh, Euston Square, and uh, we're here for the press conference. It's a, it's a rather lovely building, this is. I've never been here before, but all the combat, combat sports journalists are gathered, and I heard that, uh, that the main eventers are here as well, so it should be good. What's the feeling like as well? Because obviously this is the first time we've done anything like this in a very long time. It must be exciting, as, as well as yeah. um, other emotions. It's just different, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like anything it doesn't feel like anything I've done before regarding like the UFC press conferences and stuff. I mean, they were, they were all, you know, shut you onto a bus, take you to the place, you sit on the stage, you answer a few questions and then you go. It wasn't, wasn't as organized as this. I mean, th things are now, you know, things have changed a lot more now. Like the press conferences are much bigger things now, but where, when I was competing in, they were quite small by comparison. Um, so this is, this is really cool. And the fact that, you know, Mark Antonio Barrera and Ricky Hatton are here. I mean, that's amazing. Just for me as a combat sports fan to be able to sit at a press conference with them. I'd want to be here just to watch if I wasn't more than fighting on the cards, you know. So it's very cool. Very yeah, cool. that's awesome. And uh, Diego's managed to turn up. Um, heard, have yeah. you seen him yet? No, I haven't seen him yet. I haven't seen him. I saw him on his Instagram stories that he was on a flight over. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's here. It makes it a bit more real, you know, not, for, not only for me and for him, but for everybody else as well. You know, you've got a press conference, it's just me sitting there. There's questions around whether he's actually going to come, but... The fact that he's got on a plane and he's come over, I, I appreciate that. Um, a lot of respect for him, and I, I know this is going to be a good scrap. So, um, the fact that we get a face off today, and I can get a, I can get a measure of him. I've worn my my, my low cut shoes as well, so I'm not too, I'm not too much taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> What's your relationship like been like with Diego over the years? It's it's been I mean it's kind of, it's kind of it's it, there's not really been a relationship as such. I mean we've not. Like I've said a couple of things I think in the past that have, that have pissed him off, you know, just things to the media, like making assessments of his fights that he wasn't particularly happy with and obviously his, his uh, choice of training partners and coaches and that kind of thing, particularly coaches, like he, he's just, he's been on a, he's been on a few different journeys, Diego, has throughout his combat sports career and I've, I've been a fan for a long enough to have been through all of those journeys. The Diego now seems a lot a lot more calm and more balanced than he has done in many, many years, which makes me makes me happy for him as an individual, but also as an opponent. You know, I want to make sure that he's in the right state of mind. Yeah. When they when they when they phoned me up and they said for uh, a tough time, COVID, let's have a like a celebration of, after coming out of COVID. You having one last movement about? I thought, oh yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I I lost family to COVID and mental health and, and all that. You know, so it's. Uh, Everyone needs a lift on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it, it's, we're ticking every box, aren't we, with the undercard, live yeah. acts, you know, and everyone from different professions on the undercard and everything like that, we're ticking every box, aren't we, really? It's yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Well today. Not in Manchester. <laughs> don't, get, don't get sun in Manchester, <laughs> right, I tell you, mate. It's good to have a focus for training again, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's like, and it's I train professional boxers now, mm. and um, he was 43 years of age. You know what I mean? And you know, shifting my weight and setting my training regime out for me, for me novice pros to look and go. Get him 43. Yeah. <laughs> Still, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I like, I'd like to think it's a bit of an inspiration for yeah. me. But, you know, to, you know, so I'm helping not only helping myself and my own well-being. You know, I'm helping others on, on the night. I mean, we've all documented how um, how my. Uh, I fell apart for that little short period and if there's people out there with mental health and problems and they're saying, oh, do you remember him six or seven years ago, look at him now, 43 years of age, then it's much worthwhile, isn't it? Yeah. And people yeah. say, what are you doing it for? I feel like, hey, fucking stupid. You know, know what I mean? And, and to hear the roar of the crowd again. You know, yeah. I think it's an obvious question where we're doing it, but you know. Yeah, yeah, I think it's obvious. I mean, it's it, well for me. It's a focus of training. Yeah, it's yeah. having a direction to walk. Of course, it well, is. You know, like, you know it doesn't matter how old you get and you retire. We, we, we may maybe retire, but we're not fucking dead. No, still got to, you know, 
people need someone to, to set your sights on. You know, the minute you, the minute you can't do that, we might as well be dead, aren't we? You know, simple. Almost <laughs> <laughs> Millimeters, bro. Millimeters. Do you think you'll fight Kevin man. again? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I've been praying for him that he would heal up and not have to get an ACL surgery. Mm -hmm. And then prayers came through, and he's going to be all right. You know, he's going to be able to heal. But um, he's not even going to be able to train until the summer. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Eagle FC. I'm definitely um, one of the still top contenders at 165. I have. There's a couple. There's a couple guys from Dagestan. There's a couple, couple standouts uh, from Brazil. But um, now I'm still at the top of the food chain. Me and oh, Kevin yeah. Lee. So it, it, when he comes back, you know we're gonna have to work through some stuff. You know I know there's one <laughs> other guy that that's a tough guy too from like from Russia or something. He yeah. got all kinds of Russians saying like how he's the baddest dude ever and. I'm like it's all talk. It's all talk. <laughs> Everybody could talk. Everybody could talk, 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 talk. Till you do. Till you do. You know. I don't want to hear about who this guy is gonna be or what you think he's possibly gonna happen. No. You gotta do it. You gotta earn your cred. Yeah. You know. Yeah. In the cage. In the ring. In the streets. That shit's earned. Life. You know. Mm. Too much. To be a, you know, if you want to be a man, you're going to earn that manhood, right? That's right. Yeah. That's it. Me, and, uh, me and Dan are going to possibly uh, run it back once or twice. You know, maybe even a third time. We don't know. We're going to see. Because there's uh, being serious offers being made in the bare knuckle. Yeah. And um, me and Dave Feldman are, have a close relationship and, and uh, good communication. So... Um, and uh, with Eagle FC, the Eagle FC has been great, man, and they've allowed me to do this, uh, this, this opportunity of a boxing exhibition because I'm still under contract with them, and so they allowed me, and, and Ali is the G. And he's like, Diego, I just want you to get paid. <laughs> I just want you to get paid, Diego. I was like... Thank you, Ali. <laughs> finally, finally, someone cares. <laughs> Be nice and cool. Ten seconds. Nice. Have a good one, gang. I'm going to start off by introducing our headline fighters. We're very, very pleased to welcome to the UK the legendary Mexican boxer, Marco Antonio Barrera. He's going to be first of all. Marco's going to be facing off against someone whose story we've all followed over, over a number of years, uh, the hitman Ricky Hatton. <laughs> we've even dusted the trumpets off. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Going from my right uh, to the left, I'll introduce the rest of the fighters. He's not here at the moment, but he'll be here at some point. Don Strapsy, uh, digital star, uh, music and crossover. I'm then pleased to introduce UFC Hall of Famer, Diego the Nightmare Sanchez. <laughs> oh, we're also thrilled to have another British fighter returning to the ring uh, after an extended layoff in uh, Dan the Outlaw Hardy. Oh. <laughs> And we'll round off with a gentleman sat to my right here, uh, Irish hip hop royalty, Casper Walsh. <laughs> one, one third of the group versatile. Give it up for Casper Walsh. Oh. Uh, Dan, obviously, you're known as one of the best analysts in the game of MMA. So tell us how you see this fight going down and how you predict the outcome. <clears throat> That's a good question. I've not really fully got into it yet. I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, in, in my head, I know what Diego brings to the table. He's a very aggressive fighter. He fights in bursts. He looked great against Kevin Lee recently as well, so I know his training camps are paying off, and I know his, his technical ability is there. Um, I expect intensity. I expect Diego to, to, you know, to take chances, to put himself on the line. I'm going to do the same thing as well. I don't think he's going to hold back any of his shots. You know, four hands or four 16-ounce gloves makes no difference. We're both going to try and punch each other in the face and body as hard as we can. And uh, I'm hoping to find a few more targets than he finds on me. 
Um, and you know, as he said, you know, I will be studying him. This is, this is a, you know, I've spent several years studying everybody else's fights and taking myself out of the equation. And I learned a lot about studying people. So now I get to put myself back in the equation, hopefully without my ego in, in the way this time. When I'm a bit, I'm, well, I'm 40 this year, I'm a bit older now. You know, get my ego out of the way and look at this objectively and figure out, you know, what I have to do to beat Diego, who I know is a great opponent, he's gonna come ready. Um, I'm just, I'm thankful to be up here, thankful for Diego for making the trip over as well. You know, I'm sharing this stage with legends. You know, I, I grew up watching these guys fight and to be sitting next to Ricky and, 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 uh, and Marco is, is beyond my wildest dreams, to be honest. Diego, I uh, heard you talking about how in the later stages of your career, you start to value your opponents a little bit more. What process did you go through to get to this? Well, throughout my career, you know, I was just so intense and a pressure fighter and, you know, I just was, uh, I liked to think of it as war and uh, that warrior spirit inside of me. But last year, I had a real run in with COVID and um, I was in the hospital and I almost died. And while I was in there, you know, I was messaging them. sports with the fight with Kevin Lee and Eagle FC. I just had a, a different appreciation for the opponent and a better understanding for that it really truly does take two guys to do this. And as you get older, now I'm 40, you know, I did, I've, I've, I've been I've been the arrogant guy, I've, I've been the confident guy, I've been all facets of, of the face-off. But now as I'm older, I know that I can't. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And so I gotta give him the respect. I gotta give him the respect that I couldn't do it without him. And you know, when you have that type of respect, you can go in there and you can beat the shit out of each other and give each other a hug, handshake, <laughs> and make a friend at the end. And that's what the true combat sports is all about, is about the honor and the integrity and the relationships that you make in, in this sport. And that's why we, we allow each other to beat the hell out of each other. It's for you guys, too, you know, the fans. But we love the journey, and we love being on both sides, you know. As you get older, you just have more respect. How was that then? Yeah, good, man. Good, a lot of fun, yeah, a lot of fun. Nice yeah. to be back like that. Yeah, lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely. It's a bit weird, it's a bit weird. <laughs> I'm not you either in the middle or in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's good, it's good. Diego sounds good as well. It sounds like it's in a good place, you know? Definitely. Sounds like it's in a good place. Sat at the press conference next to Ricky Hatton, Marco Antonio Barrera. Did you ever imagine that would ever happen? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, I, to be honest, I, I kind of given up on the idea of boxing, to be honest. I mean, I, I, when I was st first starting mixed martial arts, I had a few friends to me say, you should try boxing, there's better money in that. I went down the MMA route, but I've always wanted to get, you know, to have a go at boxing. You know? To be able to share a club with Rick Hatton and Barrera is amazing. You know, I, I grew up watching both of these guys. Both have been a massive inspiration, especially Ricky, you know, especially Ricky. I watched his training camp videos, I watched his fights on Ricky over and over again just to get me up for training for myself. So to be sitting next to him and, and uh, you know, to, to, it's, it's just amazing. It really is. And the MEN Arena, the, the Manchester Arena is going to be unreal on the night. No, it, it, well, I, I, them being it's absolutely awesome. Honestly. No, it's unbelievable. No, it's unbelievable, wasn't it? Oh, drink? And like, even when I, even when I, um, it's, it's even when I go to Vegas, well, not been for a few years, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. What, <laughs> what, <laughs> what with the COVID and all that, I've not been to Vegas for a bit. But when I had been for a few times on a holiday, they went, oh, you still love all your fans, and you still got the band, honestly. They still yeah. say you still got the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they loved it. They fucking right, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, they don't have a lot. No, did he? No, no, no. 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 And, uh, your mum, you heard about your mum. Yeah. When, when we saw her in the uh, MGM bar. Da, 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 yeah. Carl uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's on it. They're brilliant. Well, they, the MGM bar, they run out of bed, didn't they? Yeah, they did. 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 What sort of things should you do outside of? What's, what's, what's Dan Hardy's lifeline? It's just this. Is it? 
It's just still, are you obsessed as it as ever? Yeah. Do you still love it? Proper yeah, love it. Love it. You're yeah. not been jaded by it at all. The, the the business, the industry, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the actual thing itself, no. No. The actual Good thing itself, there's a purity to it still, and I don't think you can take that away. No. It's the business around it, the politics, and the, the you know the drama and all that. And yeah. that that got that got tiring. That, yeah. that wore me down, especially when I was on the road with the UFC for ten years. You know, yeah. what I mean? and you just you see the same people and the same nonsense over and over again. The, the, the point of difference between uh, between a real fight and an exhibition fight is the outage of the gloves for me. That's the only real difference. We're wearing sixteen ounce gloves, which means that I have my hands have better protection when I'm punching them in the head. Like, I know Diego, he's not coming to, to dance around and, and play tag with me, he's coming to fight me, because that's the only way that Diego knows how to compete. And I'm the same, you know, you, you can't put me in a, in a ring in front of an, a, a sold out arena and tell me to pull my punches, it's just not gonna happen. The adrenaline, the excitement is gonna let some of those punches go full power. And I'll be looking for targets to try and put him on the canvas. And I know he'll be doing the same, and I wouldn't want anything else. That's the uh, that's really camera. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's the really ring. There's like fury on his fury on his front. All the fire that's going on. There's a me there. A little bit of shadow boxing, but just forward that way, please. Pretty well set up for a training camp already. <laughs> I just start one there. <laughs> yeah, don't get into it. Eh? That's it, that's it. <laughs> well, seeing your opponent helps, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Lovely to see you. And you. Nice to see you again, Andrew. all right? Yes, all the best. Yes. See you later, mate. Nice to see you. All the best. Take care. Thank you, mate. See you later. See you later, boys. Cheers.